Hello friends, in this video I will be presenting my 8th chapter from my series Literary Pearls. Uh, it will deal with uh, Alexander Pope's Rape of the Lock. I want to deal with uh, two or three aspects of Alexander Pope's Rape of the Lock. Uh, this video is entitled as Rape of the Lock, a satire on contemporary social life. Uh, Jeffrey Tillotson says, I quote, as it came to be practiced in the 17th and 18th centuries, the mock heroic mocked at epic but mocked more at the contemporary society. I unquote. As per Tillotson's statement, the rape of the log, a mock epic, fulfills its function of uh, satirizing the society. In this poem, Alexander Pope shows himself emphatically as the spokesman of his age. Pope exposes in a witty manner the follies and absurdities of the high society of the times. Pope has employed all the recognized uh, weapons of satire in a most effective manner. The most principal target of satire in this poem are the aristocratic ladies and gentlemen of Pope's day. We get to see in this poem the elegance and the emptiness, the meanness and the vanity, the jealousies, the treacheries and intrigues of social life of the aristocracy in 18th century. As Thomas Ca uh, Campbell says, I quote, in the knowledge and description of refined life, Pope is the mirror of his times. I unquote. It is said that the rape of the law is the triumph of significance. The, uh, here, Pope, in a most effective manner, gives us an amusing picture of the society embodying every minute details about social follies, especially in the aristocratic ladies. It exposes to ridicule their laziness, idleness, frivolities, vanities, follies, shams, shallowness, superficiality, prudery, hypocrisy, false ideas of honor, excessive interest in toilet and self-embellishment, high matrimonial aspirations, etc. It also exposes to ridicule the foppery, the amorous uh, proclivities, the bravado, the snuff taking of the aristocratic gentlemen of the time. Apart from that, the poet mocks at certain other aspects of the life of 18th century. Uh, as Thomas Campbell says again, I quote, we have men and women described by Shakespeare, by Pope we have the ladies and gentlemen of England, I unquote. Pope not only makes fun of ladies superficially but through his satire we get a peep into their society outward as well as inward too. He tells us that the vanities of society ladies do not end even with their death. Also Pope in the beginning of his satire strikes on the idleness and splendid living of these ladies. He mocks at the late rising of the aristocratic ladies and gentlemen of the time. It was the honor of twelve when Belinda opened her eyes, uh, it was the horror of twelve, sorry, when Belinda opened her eyes to fall asleep again. I quote, now lap dogs give themselves the rousing shake and sleepless lovers just at twelve awake. I unquote. Satiris tells us that the arist aristocratic ladies of those days were excessively fond of gilded chariots and of umber. He also gives us a satirical division of ladies of different temperaments into different categories. Fiery termagants, fielding ladies, grave broods and light coquettes. He again mocks at the extravagant aspirations of the ladies who imagine matrimonial alliances with peers and dukes and dreamt of garters, stars and coronets. Pope ridicules the fickleness and superficiality of the ladies by referring to their hearts as moving toy shops and their varying vanities. I quote, with varying vanities from every part, they shift the moving toy shop of their hearts. I unquote. The poet then makes fun of Belinda by saying that when she wakes up, her eyes first open on a love letter in which, he, uh, which the writer has spoken of wounds, charms and ardors. The poet laughs not merely at fashionable ladies' desire to receive love letters, but also at the conventional vocabulary of those love letters. Besides these, the self-embellishment and the self-decoration of women also reveals in the poem. Belinda is described as 
commencing her toilet operations with a prayer to the cosmetic powers further arius conjectures regarding the disaster that threatens belinda are stated in some of the most amusing lines in the poem i quote whether the neem shall break dinas law or some grail china jar receive a flaw or loser heart or necklace at a ball or whether heaven has doom that shock must fall the paired calamities are not merely ridiculed contrast but they show the moral bankruptcy of the ladies of the time the comparison of honor to brocade missing mask ball to missing religious prayer and loose heart to the loss of a necklace all these show the hypocrisy of values the confusion of values in these lines represents the disorder of the whole social system of the time the moral bankruptcy of the ladies is further ridiculed by making a sarcastic reference to the suppressed sexual desires of women and their unexpressed cravings for sexual gratification pope emphasizes the same bankruptcy it is ridiculed again when thalestris points out the need for sacrificing everything even chastity for the sake of maintaining a good reputation virtue might be lost but not a good name i quote honor for weed at whose unrivaled shrine is pleasure virtue all our sakes resign i unquote the same attitude reveals from belinda's declaration that she would not have felt so offended if the baron had stolen uh, any other hair from her sparing that particular lock of her hair pope's satirical wit is also seen in thalestris's mentioning men in the same breath a monkey lap dogs and parrots and belinda's recalling pole's muteness and shock's unkindness pope does not spare the gallants of the time they are the targets of mockery which is as sharp and keen as the satire on the ladies the life of these aristocratic men gallants the dandies uh, we can say or which reflects in this poem was a devoid of any serious purpose or morality uh, at that of the ladies one baron is very satirically described as building an altar of love and setting fire to it with his amorous sighs and with tender love letters the baron's worship of love uh, here is comparable to belinda's worship of the cosmetic pass no less amusing is the satire on gallants like sir plume sir plume's affectations are ridiculed with reference to his amber snuff box and his spotted cane we laugh at his unthinking face and his habit of excessive swearing the poet pokes fun at other gallants like dapper wit and fopling i quote one died in a metaphor and one in song i unquote pope amply exposes the hollowness of the upper classes of the time the empty and shallow conversations of the ladies and knights at the court amuses us everywhere the subject of talks seems to be one of dance parties court visits or sex scandals pope writes i quote at every word a reputation dies i unquote the pauses in the conversation were filled by snuff taking fan swinging singing laughing ogling etc coffee drinking and the game of pomber also indicate the pleasure loving society of the time in the poem we have several catalogs wittily conveying the muddle and the hypocrisy of fashionable society thus by using various weapons of ridicule such as humor wit irony sarcasm insinuations pope attacks on hypocritic upper class society of the time though some critics find too much harshness in pope satire as feminine frivolity the poem is not rude and contemptuous but the purpose of the poet is as himself tells us to laugh at i quote the little unguarded follies of the female sex i unquote that's what that was all about my uh, from my side on alexander pope's rape of the law a satire on contemporary social life thanks friends